This is Tom Bernacki. Today, I'm going to be talking about the high ankle sprain. So the low ankle sprain is down here and it's a little bit more common, but with the recent marijuana changes in the state of Michigan, we're seeing a lot more high ankle sprains. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We appreciate your likes, your subscribes, your comment. We really love hearing if this stuff helps. It really makes a big difference for us, so thank you. I'm just kidding about my marijuana jokes, but maybe, who knows, maybe with it being legalized, there's a lot more ankle sprains in general. But the low ankle sprain is very, very common. Um, you know, when we look up like the Google search terms, it's one of the most common medical problems that we see. The high ankle sprain realistically is probably like uh, one fifth of the time uh, how much people are interested in it or asking about it. And the difference is the high ankle sprain is up here. It's in the top and front of the ankle, whereas the low ankle sprain is when your foot turns in. So the anatomy is a little bit different. In the high ankle sprain, there's three ligaments, and in the low ankle sprain, there's three ligaments. So in the bottom of the ankle, it's really when your foot does this, but the high ankle sprain is really when your knee's planted and your foot twists out. So see these two bones, the tibia and the fibula right here, you can see there's like a metal piece between them right here. That in the front, that's an AITFL ligament. In the back of the ankle, that's called a PITFL ligament. And in between the two bones, there's an interosseous membrane. So you can see when the ankle bends up and twists out, so I should say the foot, which is this talus bone right here, it can rupture these ligaments. So the way you would test that in your cells are realistically, there's two types of tests. There's a squeeze test. So if you grab below the knee and you squeeze, you'll feel pain radiate down to your ankle. If that's not happening, probably not an ankle sprain, although not a guarantee. And number two is if you plant your knee at 90 degrees, so say you're sitting on the couch and you try and twist your foot out with your weight loaded on it, if it radiates up, that's called the squeeze test. So you have the squeeze test and you have, or sorry, that's the external rotation test. The squeeze test is when you squeeze and the external rotation is when you externally rotate. So the names are simple enough. The low ankle sprain on the other hand is you touch with your finger here and make sure that that's what's hurting there. So realistically, uh, what we see in the office is when people think they sprain their ankle, if it's gradual and it builds up, click on this video right here because it's usually associated with pronation and ankle joint equinus. This video will go over all that, so let that video help. The rest of this video will go over high ankle sprains and the recovery time and how to best take care of it and whether you need surgery or not. So the symptoms of a high ankle sprain are generally when the foot turns up and out. So when these two bones are forced to twist apart. So usually most people, if you have a severe high ankle sprain, and the most famous one I can think of is Terrell Owens when he played for the Philadelphia Eagles, when his foot was planted and his leg twisted out, he came back for the Super Bowl, but it took him about eight weeks to come back. But these can lead to a broken ankle, ruptured ligaments. So you want to go see your podiatrist and get an MRI or an x-ray. Make sure nothing's broken if it's a severe injury. Because if it is, sometimes surgery is needed. So the recovery time on a surgery, if there's a broken ankle or ruptured ligaments, the general rule is bone takes like six to eight weeks plus to heal. I always say it's a lot longer. And ligaments are about three months to heal. But again, I say it's a little bit longer, including the rehab. Um, you know, don't feel guilty if you're taking longer than that to recover because it can be that long. So the recovery time is generally ankle sprains come in three grades. So grade one is like a tweak. So it's like a strain of the ligaments. So what that usually means is one to two weeks to start feeling better. So baby it, use a boot, use an ankle brace, don't play sports for like a week or two. If it's a grade two, that means like a little bit of a partial tear, that's gonna take you between uh, two weeks to 12 weeks. So that could be a much larger gap. Generally, uh, I always tell people to be safe longer. So for the first few weeks, you can start with a boot or even a cast and then move up to a lace-up ankle brace, 
with a good shoe and a good orthotic, and I'm gonna go over all those soon. Whereas a grade three, these are actually like ruptured ligaments, broken bones. So we're talking like three months if you're protected in a cast or a boot. But if it's not getting better, if there's some deformity, if there's a chip to bone, essentially what you wanna do is get imaged and see if you're a candidate for surgery. If you're an athlete where three plus months go by and you're not feeling better, you might need a procedure to correct this. Because if the ligaments rupture and they're not together, so if the bones are moving and the ligaments aren't anchored into each other, if they're just flapping around as you're walking, that's not going to heal and eventually scar tissue forms at the ends and they don't grow back into themselves. So if you have one of these lighter sprains, here's what you wanna do. First, rest, ice, compression, and elevation. So this is like an overused thing. I'm not gonna get into it really, but icing can help with pain. It's not necessarily going to help it faster. Same with compression and elevation. These things help it feel better, but won't necessarily make it heal overnight. What you do want to do is proper diagnosis. So that grade one, two, or three with your podiatrist. And the next thing you want to do is if it's swollen and if you're on the road to recovery, compression ankle braces are really good. Lace up ankle braces. So the more injured you are, the more likely you are to use a boot. So initially, if you're really injured, a boot or a cast may be needed for a couple of weeks. At the same time, a scooter, or a walker or crutches or an eye walk may be needed. So for the first few weeks, it might be beneficial to keep all weight off of it. Definitely stop playing sports, give it time to rest because this is one of those nagging injuries that are gonna take a long time to get better. The real key is shoes and orthotics. So there's a lot of different shoes. My favorite brands are Brooks, but you go from a minimalist shoe to a maximalist shoe. The more injured you are, the more you want a maximalist shoe like this. So see, this is a Hoka one. It's very thick and it's called a rocker bottom. So it rockers through. Whereas a less supportive minimalist shoe really just lands flat. Whereas the thicker formier ones roll through. Generally, the older the patient, the stiffer, the less mobility you have, the more maximalist shoes benefit you. Whereas if you're a 20 year old with no health issues, you can get away with a little bit less, but I would still recommend more support while you're injured. I also recommend a great orthotic. So with an orthotic, check this out. Without an orthotic, see how the foot flattens out. And as I mentioned, that external rotation is really what tweaks these ligaments and the ankle ligaments. With an orthotic, the difference is, watch this. The orthotic, see how it has a heel cup and an arch, prevents your foot from flattening out. But without the orthotic, look how it flattens out. So a good shoe like a Hoka or Brooks or Saucony or New Balance or On, O-N, uh, are all really good ones. Combined with an orthotic, that does amazing. Shoe support is really important. There's the minimalist index that I'm showing here. You can go back and take a look at it, that. But minimalist shoes, don't support your foot as much, but they make you use your muscles more, which for young people can be good. But for older people, I recommend great support. So especially pronation control. And this will make your muscles, specifically your calf and your hamstring, absorb the stress. So take a look at this again. My left foot's tighter than my right foot. So this is called dorsiflexion. Because my left foot can't bend up, it has to twist out to make up for that. If your shoe doesn't have a little bit of lift and doesn't have anti-pronation control or pronation control, then your foot, specifically my left foot, when it lands, will turn out. And because there's a flexibility difference, my left foot twists out and my joints have to absorb it more, specifically my ankle joints. So take a look at this flexible, healthy young gentleman. His feet are not buckling out. The shoes are a little bit supportive, but not a ton supportive. If he had more support, he doesn't need it because he's flexible. But this person doesn't have a ton of support in their shoes, plus they're not flexible. Oh, look at how much their feet buckle out. Their hamstring, their calf muscles are probably sore and their feet have to buckle out to compensate. That's gonna give you a sore ankle, guaranteed. With ankle pain, realistically, try the more supportive shoe to start with unless you're a young, healthy person, the minimalist shoes, and I could talk about this for two hours, are not really gonna help your ankle pain for the reasons I just showed. Click down in the show notes to see some of my favorite shoes. I could talk about shoes forever. You don't wanna hear it because this is already a long video, but check out some of the favorites down in the show notes below or the linked webpage.
you can combine that with an ankle compression brace too, or a compression sock right here. So you could do the compression sock, or you could even do the compression pants. Are they going to make you a better athlete? Not really. Can they help bring your swelling down? Studies show they can help a little bit, but don't go out and buy compression socks if it's a big hassle because it won't make a huge difference for you. Check out some of these compression socks right here. So you could see down here the different size. They actually do a good job showing you the different colors here, but specifically what you want to look at is they're not that expensive. Like eight pairs for $17. Like, I mean, come on, that's like $2 per pair of socks. So it's like a dollar per sock that you can keep re-wearing. So you can kind of see uh, these are meant to be more athletic. There's some sizing guides, but these are marketed as nursing socks, but the, what I want you to look at is 15 to 20 millimeters of mercury. This is too low of compression for insurance to cover. Most adults that have swelling problems will not be able to get on the 20 to 30 or 40 millimeter compression socks. These are so tight that nobody wears them. In my experience, everybody tries to buy them, but maybe like 2% of people actually wear them. Get something that's low cost, so for like, you know, a, a dollar per pair here, uh, that's lower compression. If you find that it's not enough compression for you, then get something heavier. Don't goof around starting with like the 40 millimeter of mercury, trying to get insurance to cover it because you're going to jump through a lot of hoops. You're going to waste a lot of time and it's going to cut into your skin and you're going to hate it. If you're like 98% of the patients I see, start with something low cost and lower compression, see how it works, see how it fits into your routine, and then go up to the higher compression. It's really the supposing twisting that's damaging these high ankle sprain ligaments. So a good orthotic and a good brace, that's how you get better overnight. The ligament's not healed, but if you stop the function of the ligament, then it won't get re-injured or start hurting. But be safe, it's not always perfect. When you're first injured, I'm a huge, huge fan of a lace-up ankle brace. These ones with the three straps, um, you know, where you could adjust in or out, make a big difference in terms of stability. I'm able to get patients out of a boot earlier if they're responsible and wear a good lace-up brace and a shoe. It's a lot more comfortable for your back, um, you know, not being in a boot. But that can make a big difference for sure to get pressure off that foot and prevent that twisting motion. So an ankle brace is key in my eyes. The important thing to consider with ankle sprains is the twisting motion. It's not up and down pressure or twisting in and out. It's the ankle twisting in and the foot twisting out, as you can see at the bottom there. This motion torques the ligaments. An orthotic and an ankle brace stops that motion. That should theoretically allow you to walk immediately safely. Then as like one, two, three months with proper diagnosis go by. So if you're closer to a grade two or grade three, you need longer time, get evaluated with a physical therapist at the same time. So as a podiatrist or an orthopedic surgeon, we're going to diagnose you more, but a physical therapist will follow up with you a little bit more regularly. So a physical therapist will assess your motion, make sure you're getting equal. Uh, in terms of length. But then as like three months go by and you're equally flexible, start working on your pain control, your flexibility, and your strength. That will make a big difference. When you first get injured, that's not the time to start rehabbing. So specifically, don't stretch, don't exercise when your foot's bruised and sore. Rest, ice, compression, elevation. Give it that initial few days. Protect it with that brace get that feeling a lot better. You can take some medication, so if it's really bad and broken, some pain medication, or some ibuprofen, or some Tylenol for pain control, check with your doctor. There are some studies that show broken bones and broken ligaments can slow down with ibuprofen, but that's minor and not super conclusive stuff. So the real key next is when like a month or two go by, and you're stiff and tight from being in the boot, start icing your foot and massaging it at the same time. You can start the massage a little bit earlier, but not if it's painful. So a frozen can, you have these frozen ice bottle products. They're not great on the bottom of the foot, but for your calf, for your hamstring, for your thigh, these spike balls can work really well on the bottom of the foot. 
on the calf muscle. I like foam rollers. I like massage sticks as well. And I'll show you that in a second. But the key is that tight ankle, you have to loosen up. Otherwise, you're going to have a stiff, tight, contracted ankle. So a massage stick is awesome. See how much that loosens up my calf muscle. Simply using that for a couple minutes can make a huge difference. I personally use these when I play sports. I use them in the mornings. I loosen up the bottom of my foot, my hamstring, my calf muscle, my thigh. You can put creams. Biofreeze is a great cream or some icy hot type creams can work really well. And these creams basically can warm up and loosen up your muscles. So they can be very effective as well medication after that initial few days or first week don't use it it's just not a long-term solution so these are available and medications can always make things feel better but they don't get to the root cause of the problem the real key is healing those ligaments protecting them with ankle braces and what happens is you have to loosen up the muscles so massage guns i've really come on board with these lately uh, you can use a massage stick or while you're watching tv you can use these as well. This is one Bob and Brad are great guys on YouTube that are physical therapists. Um, I worked with them on this project. Um, I'm not getting paid for this. I don't necessarily um, have a stake in this, but this is a great gun that I use. There are some cheaper ones. And what you wanna do is see this rubber ball right here. It's simple. Just put that rubber ball on and use it on your thigh, your hamstring, your calf muscle for like 30 seconds to a minute for each muscle in the morning and you will be shocked how quickly it loosens up. But this is a warning, don't use it when you're still injured. Use it on tight, stiff muscles as you're recovering from the ankle sprain because that's what's really going to slow you down long-term. It's not the actual sore ligaments, the tight muscles compensating. So then after you massage for one to two minutes, you wanna stretch. So see, without stretching, I have a hard time touching my toes, but as I warm up, I instantly get much much more flexible if you can't touch your toes use a towel turn your foot in and right here i'm stretching my calf and my hamstring again 30 seconds to a minute in the mornings this should be a very short routine and same thing when you get up you should loosen it up check your ankle mobility usually the one that was injured is going to be a little bit stiffer the muscles will be a little bit weaker so i would recommend get up in the morning massage loosen your joints up less than five minutes total for everything then use a towel, stretch your foot, stretch your hamstring, stretch your calf. You can stand and lean down to stretch those muscles out at the same time. That can make a big, big difference in getting you feeling better. So that is a very effective treatment method. And an easier way, I like to use gravity. So see, my right leg's a little bit tighter there, so it's bending a little bit. See, I kind of push on my thighs, but again, if you have back problems, don't throw your back doing this. It might be easier just to sit on the floor and use a towel if that's the case for you. Don't injure yourself is the key. And then stretch out the inside of your thighs. That's your groin muscles. And these stretch slant boards work really well. They're not super expensive. They're like 50 bucks or less unless inflation raised it. But basically you can set it at 15 degrees and as a week goes by, you can check your flexibility. Is your hamstring and calf muscle more flexible in this case it is. Right here I go up to 20 degrees, now it's even more flexible. Now I go up to like 25 degrees. Now the next week it's even more flexible. Now I go up to like 40 degrees, whatever that final setting is. And that makes a big difference long-term in measuring your flexibility. When people injure their ankle ligaments, their calf muscle usually gets a little bit weaker and tighter on that side. So this leads to stiffness and imbalance through your ankle. And this is really why ankle joints don't really get back to 100%. And that's what I focus on quite a bit with my patients is the long-term rehab because these are the so-called ankles that are not getting better. And if you don't click on this video below, it'll help uh, for ankles that aren't getting better. But you don't have to be buff like this guy. But essentially start stretching out your hamstrings, your calf muscles, that bulging muscles there is called the gastrocnemius. So you wanna get that as flexible and as healthy as the other side so you're walking symmetrically. Orthotics can help with that, an ankle brace can help with that, good shoes can help with that. It's almost like wearing braces on a crooked tooth, not just working out. And after all this rehabbing, make sure you're wearing good shoes, 
good home slippers. So I'm a huge fan of home slippers. Don't walk around barefoot. So sometimes people have a great shoe and orthotic outside the house, but inside the house, they're sabotaging themselves with poor slippers. So don't be one of those people. And cross training. If you're going back to running, maybe switch it up, do some swimming, do some bike riding, do some strength training. You know, um, I'm a big fan of Kelly Starrett as well. I personally did some of his courses that can work really well. So I started doing that as well. Check these out in the show notes. If that helped and you have foot pain, check out this video. This is for you. Please subscribe. Please leave us a comment. It makes a big difference and let us know if we suck or if we need to improve.